Hey, Mark Clark here from Vancouver, Canada, Village Church. We are in the Gospel of Matthew, and in Matthew 4, Jesus gets tempted. It says, he was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, which is interesting because he gets sent into a place by the Spirit, meaning God actually leads him into a place, and this happens in our life all the time. Sometimes it's God that leads us to a circumstance of life where we come to the end of ourself, and we have nothing else to do but actually look to him. That's how he actually actually sovereignly directs our lives. And so don't always think that a challenging scenario isn't from him. It's to conform us to the image of his son, which is the will of God for us, Paul says in Romans 8. And then he says in verse 2, and after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, if you're the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, man shall not live by bread alone. And he quotes Deuteronomy, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And here's the big idea for you and me. Every single one of us gets tempted in some way in life. Uh, some of you have been tempted in such a way that your life's already derailed and you're sitting there going, temptation's already taken from me. It's taken my family or my job or whatever it is. Here's how you and I need to combat temptation in our life. The word of God needs to be the thing that we combat it with. And so when we get tempted, when we feel like we're gonna go down a route, the word of God, the Bible itself is what we need to go to. All three times the devil tempts Jesus in this story, he throws the Bible back at him. Now, here's why this is important. We live in an age right now where the Bible's kind of become secondary or third or fourth down the line, that we've elevated other things in authority. Your experience, how you feel about something, uh, maybe your church itself and its traditions, and we've said, these are the things that really matter. And the Bible kind of, you know, it's old, it doesn't really have the impact that it used to, or just take general principles from it, but don't let it like control everything about how you think. And this story challenges us, scandalizes us to say, no, no, the Bible's the thing with the power. The Bible's the thing that's gonna help you defeat sin in your life and live to the glory of God to the maximum. And there's people who come to me and they're like, why don't you believe this? Or why don't you believe this about salvation? That every, every religion just leads to God. Why can't you believe that? The reason I can't, I mean, it feels nice. It feels like something around the coffee shop I would like to believe as a nice Canadian who doesn't like conflict, whose favorite word is sorry. Sorry, sorry, go on the line, sorry. We like to believe that. The problem is the Bible says, I'm the only way to the Father. And so the Bible itself has to be the authority in our life to make sure our life is living for the glory of God, for the good of others, and so that it actually can defeat the temptation in our life so our life doesn't get derailed. Make sure the Bible is the authority versus anything else in your life.